this is the last uh, session of presentations for today. So then we will go on with the roundtable discussion. So the session will start with Sally McHugh, who will talk about a technology enhanced learning model for engaging children with heritage. Yeah. So hi, everybody. So um, we are Sally, Tony and Fiona from the National University of Ireland in Galway. And my PhD research was supported and supervised by Tony, who is the senior lecturer in the School of Education and deputy head of school, and by Fiona, who is a learning technologist in the Centre of Teaching and Learning at NUI Galway. So what was the project all about? Well, this PhD research explored ways of enhancing young people's digital engagement with local heritage and place. Uh, the study was a cross-curricular exploratory design across schools and museums. So it was four Irish primary schools, one city museum and one international museum. I wanted to know if creative constructionist, constructionist technologies, that is technologies that you make, build or create with, could impact uh, engagement with heritage in place. And theoretically, um, the work was informed by the makerspace philosophy and especially Seymour Papier and Mitch Resnick's theories on how to foster creativity by supporting children to work on projects that they're passionate about um, with their peers and within a playful atmosphere. Um, the project used digital storytelling to, as the means to enhance uh, children's engagement with heritage. I used simple low threshold apps like Minecraft and iMovie and Comic Life uh, for children to create their interpretations on their local heritage or objects within a museum. Uh, the project was very much a creative, playful and student-centered approach to heritage engagement. So an important aspect of this project was getting outside into historical space. Children brought iPads, which were supplied by the university with them on field trips and recorded images for their stories. Uh, children were not required to stick to factual historical narrative or to adopt the museum's curator's perspective on the meaning of objects. In the school, more adherence and alignment with the curriculum was required, though, by the teachers. And one way of achieving a balance of, of the design across both learning environments was to adopt a playful learning approach. The rationale was to increase the children's interest, motivation, and engagement with cultural heritage by giving them opportunities to connect with each other, their own identities and factual historical narrative in a playful way. Um, through place making activities, children made connections with each other and their involvement contributed to their sense of belonging, place and community. Um, I used design-based research methodology and design-based research is a flexible interventionist iterative approach and it enabled the research to design guidelines for educational practice within natural or authentic settings of, let's say, the school and the museum. And at the end of six inter interventions across schools, outdoor historical sites and museums, museum learning environments, the techie pedagogic model resulted in a set of design sensitivities and design informants. So we wanted the model to be adaptable to other learning environments. So I tested it in a significantly different context, which was in the Exploratorium Museum in San Francisco. And that was while I was on a Fulbright Museum Fellowship. However, there were challenges in its adaptation, namely cultural um, identities, differences there, differences in age cohort of participants, time constraints, different built heritage, um, and the program being held solely within the museum. So therefore the participants and I took a more dialogic approach to understanding place. Um, and what emerged for these young people in this small sample was that their understanding of place in San Francisco was of relationships, of belonging, of family and friends. And this was more important than location. So um, challenges that I would um, have come up with would be the first one would be to do with learning in place. And the whole core concept of place-based learning involves being in and experiencing place and developing rootedness and active citizenship and a democratic mindset. But it is challenging to run place-based education programs in a museum when the literature suggests that benefits uh, are being outside and in place. And this is where the engagement with physical place and heritage happens. But however, the literature also suggests that museums are in a position to mediate a sense of place and that they have a potential role in making connections between people and place. So a challenge for museums is to think creatively how to bring the museums out into place and into children's worlds 
rather than the idea of bringing children into the museums. So post pandemic, finding ways to bring the museum into the classroom or virtual spaces or more closely situate them in outdoor cultural heritage places is a challenge that we all have to meet. And another challenge I found was equity of inclusion. So cultural heritage education programs in schools are very important because you reach potentially every child in the community. Whereas in our experience with the museum, it was more middle-class privileged children that attended the workshops. Um, it is a challenge to ensure that there is equity in the museum's work in this regard, and that there are measures taken to reach all children and not only those with the social capital to engage. And the final challenge is the sustainability of educational designs. A collective channel challenge for educational designers, researchers, museum staff and funding agencies is that innovative educational projects are most, mostly one-off projects. So whilst any models produced are adaptable and adoptable by other institutions and other researchers, the, res the research shows that very little are resourced in the longer term and activities can lack long-term sustainability. Models only work if supported over time and if museums, schools and cultural heritage bodies redesign their relations mm -hmm. and routines. So there's the challenge for all of us in considering how to make improvements that last. So that's it. Thank you very much. Located on Istanbul's one of the oldest historical areas. Um, Perian Museum's Orientalist Painting Collection gathers significant artworks by European artists influenced by the Ottoman world <laughs> and Ottoman artists and shows how they inspired each other from, uh, from 17th to 19th centuries. We focused on one exhibition of the museum for a year and worked on children's engagement. This exhibition, intersecting worlds, ambassadors and painters, depicts not only international relationships, but also portrays entertainments, clothes, and artifacts that have been significant part of the context. Um, and this highly rich historical context was not easily accessible to children when it comes to the historical narrative. We decided to design a, a picture book as uh, for museums, picture books, and guidebooks have been significant tools with narration. They're affordable and accessible for the crowded school groups. The museum didn't have any interactive book for children, but they had several educational programs. Based on my experience in these programs as an educator, we created the picture book prototype. Several missions were designed to introduce abstract concepts from Ottoman area to children, such as ambassadorship. Each mission was addressing the tradition in the painting and a narrative play around ambassadorship aimed to help children to embody the role of ambassador as they try to overcome the problems of ambassadors in the history. In this picture book, we utilize purpose paper circuitry as a material interaction. When children push the buttons under the symbols of the paintings, they can light up the next painting or engage with the tradition. Nine to 10 years old children read the prototype of the book in the exhibition. Uh, for example, one of the painting was about the story of Ottoman envoys who tried to recollect the empire's debts uh, from another country in several attempts. Children as a group negotiated on how they can succeed in this test while sustaining peace among countries. Based on the comparison of my observations in this reading session with the general guided tour, I can assert that picture books can offer interactions alternative to guided tours and can complement the guided tours with the narration and activities presented in these books. We were able to observe that children shared their ideas with their peers more than the guided tours and they also question the culture that they currently live in. By blending different fields, we tried to show how children's museum experience can be enriched through narratorial, playful and embedded engagements. Children discuss difficult tasks of ambassadors compared to cultural norms in the past with today's, imitated the scene and questioned the convention such as orientalism and interpreted the circuits in a metaphorical way. Through the basic circuits and cultural heritage, children problematize the relationship between past and future. They metaphorically interpreted the circuits as connectors between different powers, just as ambassadors are connecting different countries. They also come up with ideas on how to integrate the circuits to the paintings more. Through our engagements with cultural narratives and their history, the picture book directed children to go beyond the materialities, such as the artifacts of ambassadors, and think about the ambassadorship later making connections to children's everyday life, such as talking about importance of such com communications for peace. 
Here are a couple of questions that are still open to discuss. How can we foster visitors' critical thinking through new materials in relation to art and cultural heritage, such as paper circuits with narrations? How can we design low-cost uh, interactions that can be circulated across um, different contents, such as museums? And how can we design more inclusive and educational museum interactions, uh, especially for the context such as per museums or antarist paintings? So thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you.